Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, citizens of all ages, welcome back to another edition, Star Citizen. Uh, but today we are going to focus on 318. Um, and by focus on 318, I'm talking about making a plan after the wipe. Now, it has already been confirmed that once 318 does go live, there's going to be a database wipe. Uh, given all the, the new items and mechanics that are newly installed, uh, as well as PES, or the Persistent Entity Streaming, which will make it so you, know, you can drop something or leave something somewhere and come back to it sometime later and it'll still be there. Uh, on the caveat that if you quit the game and come back, that you come back to the same server. Now, with that, uh, the wipe can be a very contentious thing. Um, you know, you spend so much time getting all your weapons, your ships, your armor, all that good stuff just for it to go away. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is definitely not a great thing. So, what I'm going to try to do is give you some help, some tips, some pointers on what to do post-wipe. Now, the thing I'm not going to do is lay out a step-by-step -step plan as to what you should be doing, how you should go about it, because I feel that that entails too many unknowns, too many variables that you either may not have or have access to. So instead, what I'm going to go over is some tips to potentially get right back to where you were, hopefully not too long thereafter. So first, we are going to start with what ships are available to you. That is going to help dictate your first steps back up the ladder of wealth and riches. So if you've only got combat ships, start with the bounty missions. If you've got some mining ships, you know, the prospector, that's a nice way to make a quick buck. If you've got cargo ships, start small. You know, grab, grab a little bit of stuff here, bring it over there, and in no time, you should be starting to build up a nice little nest egg for you to then either invest back into yourself or into the missions that you are trying to accomplish. Another suggestion that I have is try branching out into different missions. Um, if you're constantly bounty hunting, try doing some cargo running. If you're always doing cargo, try doing maybe some medical missions, uh, you know, helping out people in the verse. Now, if you do try doing medical missions, be wary. Uh, there has been an uptick in trolling where people will create false medical beacons just to jump you. But that brings me to my next uh, point. Try teaming up. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're usually a lone wolf, you know, try getting a buddy or somebody even just from chat to come along with you, run out, do some of the bounty missions, maybe do some of the bunker missions. Um, you can make a nice little profit just running these around uh, the verse as well as uh, those medical beacons. You know, it wouldn't hurt to have one, two, maybe even three other people with you just as backup. Those medical missions, uh, medical beacon missions, excuse me, do pay a, a relatively pretty penny as long as, you know, they're not too, too far away from you. The time investment and money investment is minimal on the whole. So it's a good way to start racking up money as well as karma points within the community, uh, being medical, that is. Speaking of beacons, uh, combat beacons are also another great way to make some quick cash. Those are going to be the items that pop up at the top of your screen in your HUD. Um, those are great, especially depending on the threat level. Uh, obviously, the higher the threat level, the more money that you're going to make, but conversely, the more dangerous. Uh, another good idea would be to potentially bring a buddy or two along with those, as those can sometimes sp uh, spawn the, the higher threat, tougher versions of NPC ships, i.e., you know, the hammerhead. Uh, I think I've even seen one where the Idris is is a potential target. 
Speaking of Idris, um, another thing that you really want to take into account is your main starting location. On the surface, it might not seem like it's that big of a thing. It might seem like you're picking your aesthetic or, you know, the vibe that goes along with, with your personality the most, but that is farthest from the truth. Um, each location kind of has their own flavor of missions that they um, excel in, let's say. So, for instance, I've noticed from my experience, um, Hurston usually has a better atmosphere, pun intended, um, for like bounty hunting. There's the Miles Eckhart missions, which are basically capture slash kill, where you can get the Idris mission. That pays out a whole lot, and you will definitely want to bring more than a friend or two along with you for that one. Um, I've gotten some really good loot from doing bunker missions over there, whereas Microtech, that's where you're going to find uh, the 890 jump mission, where you get to assault the 890 jump that's already been assaulted, you know, assaultception uh, to uh, bunker missions as well. Uh, Microtech, I believe, does have some bunker missions. They've got their their own kind of aesthetic, obviously, because it's like more frozen um, and with the multiple biomes. But uh, they've also got the outposts that are scattered about on Microtech, uh, and that pays pretty pretty well. Uh, I don't really spend a whole lot of time down in Orc Corp or Orison, just because Orison's a pain in the ass. Um, luckily, in 318, they are lowering the threshold to be able to get out of atmosphere, so who knows? Maybe I myself will, will start going to Orison more, and Orison does have the Siege of Orison, um, and with the advent of 318, there are going to be more of those types of missions, from what I understand, where you're going to be like assaulting a building or a group of buildings. So again, something to keep in mind as to where your starting point will be. Now, 318 is unique as it is going to have two new game loops to make money in. One is going to be racing and the other is going to be the long awaited fabled salvage. Um, from what I understand, uh, now I am not in the PTU, um, but I do have some 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 friends who are um, s Racing I guess you can make some money with it, but you have to be really skilled and there's like a practice time um, Basically unless you're really really good at racing, you know, it might be fun to try But I wouldn't you know pin your hopes on being the next Mario Andretti or, or Earnhardt jr. Um, salvage on the other hand, you know if, if you've got a big group of people to help make uh, ship hulls for you to scrape up and grab the material from. Um, if you got the right ships or the right utilities, like the Grey Cat tool with the salvage uh, adapter, can be a decent amount of money, at least from what I'm hearing. Uh, again, numbers are kind of in flux. Like, you're not going to be a multi billionaire, multi millionaire overnight from it. Um, but it does also bring the advantage of if you happen to get damaged and you've got some salvage um, material on you, you can help repair your ship or other ships and potentially even sell those services through a beacon. Uh, sticking with the beacons, um, if you also have a Starfarer, you can load up on fuel and you can help refuel other ships. Granted though, it seems like there really isn't a big you know, demand or need or, um, you know, reliance on that mechanic yet as rest stops are still pretty frequent. Um, you know, you can usually get around that anyway by just claiming your ship. But once Pyro comes into play, if you have a Starfarer, that is going to be potentially a really good avenue of making extra money. Um, not sure about what the time sink is going to be in order to facilitate that to its fullest. You know, if you've got to go over to Crusader first to fuel up and then go over to Pyro, you know, whatever the, the time is to go in between. Anywho, um, that is also still another potentially viable method. One of the best methods to test out and potentially plan will be to try all these options, all these ideas, once the PTU 
opens up from wave one and onward. If you're a concierge or if you are a subscriber, you should have access to wave one when that drops. Uh, from there, you know, wave two should be hopefully shortly thereafter. And then wave three, if I recall, is all backers. So definitely keep your eye out for when uh, the PTU actually opens up in accordance to the wave that you would have access to, as that is a really good way to test with basically minimal or absolutely no consequence considering you can just recopy the character and bada bing bada boom you're right back to essentially square one so other than that i think i'm going to leave the video here if you like this video please leave a like let me know your comments down below um do you have any tips and tricks for people who maybe this is their first patch their first wipe uh let us know down below um don't forget, check out the uh, Discord. Uh, words are hard. Brain my damage. Don't forget to check down below for the Discord as well. Uh, getting more and more active in there as I'm finally coming back. Getting back into my stride. Um, and I hope to see all you guys in the verse. If you are um, new to Star Citizen or you're looking to make an account, use my promo code down below as well to get yourself an extra 5,000 credits in the verse. But thank you very much for watching. I hope all you beautiful bastards out there, you have yourselves a wonderful day. Morning, evening, whenever, wherever you just so happen to be. This has been Will, Daylight Gamer, signing out. Love, peace, chicken grease.